Thanks, Tom. All right, we have one more presentation, but before that, I just want to make a, we've had a lot of questions about the process uh, since this is something new to us. So before uh, Greg and Peter, uh, before Peter presents and, and uh, for German Brothers, I just wanted to share kind of where we are and where the where this process works. The incentive zoning process is new to, it's not new to the town of Canandaigua, but it's new to this board. Uh, it's some, board. Yeah, it's, <laughs> not, okay, so, so, I always forget Terry. So for most of us on the board, we have, we do have an experienced voice, I'll put it that way. So for many of us on the board, it's a new process. We have not been through it. It's not something that we have engaged in very much. It's something that we have, uh, is that a few months back, we passed, you know, resolution and a local law allowing incentive zoning throughout the town of Canandaigua, which opened up the RLD and the residential lake district for that. Uh, so like I said, it's not something that we've done very often and a lot of people have questions. So I just want to give a brief synopsis of what it is, how it works and kind of the steps going forward. So in incentive zoning, the developer, a developer approaches, so somebody with a parcel approaches the town of Canandaigua and asks for special zoning considerations in exchange for amenities that will be provided to the town and its residents. So it's a request for a change in exchange for amenities to be provided by that developer uh, to, the, to the town for the benefit of the residents. Uh, prior to tonight's presentation, uh, Peter and representatives from German Brothers met with individual board members in March individually to kind of lay out the scope of the project to just kind of to kind of a feeling out, you know, I kind of like a listening session just to see where people are. Meetings happen again in August with individual board members and representatives from German Brothers. And I just want to, I've received a lot of questions from residents. There have been no, there's been no discussion by the board in its entirety at this point. Uh, there has been no decision by the board on any aspect of this prior to tonight. So as this presentation goes forward, you're hearing it, and this is the first time that we will all hear this together as a board. So this is the first time the five of us are sitting in the same room hearing this project and hearing the presentation. So no decisions will be made tonight uh, about, the, about the project or any sort of you know, future, and this is the model for future incentive zoning requests as well. So the next steps tonight, there's a presentation. Uh, there will be town board discussion, there will be questions. And I know there are probably people online uh, for, uh, with, with questions and thoughts. Uh, <laughs> there will be a public hearing next month, and that will be the time for questions pertaining to this project. So it kind of gives a month to hear it, to digest. Uh, Peter and German Brothers representatives will be back next month for the public hearing for time for questions uh, for anything pertaining to that. So I would ask during privilege of the floor that comment, you know, that save comments for if there are questions about this to save them for the public hearing uh, next month. So in September, like I said, there will be the public hearing. That will be the chance for comment. In between times, there will always, you can always email board members, raise questions, ask comments along the way. Now, subsequent town board meetings, from this point on every discussion uh, around a project or any sort of incentive zoning project after, after the presentation is made, Discussions are now, any discussion as the town board will be made in public and will be in a group setting like this. It will be done during priority business at the beginning of the meeting. And that's kind of where we talk things out, figure out where we are, try to come to a consensus. And that's kind of the, the negotiation piece between the board and the developer to where we can get a point where, okay, we're willing to grant incentive zoning and the developer is willing to to provide X amenities to the town, we come to agreement, then we move forward with that process. That could take several board meetings. There's no timetable on this. There's no set number of meetings that we need to have. Then after all that's done, then the project goes to the planning board. And the planning board goes through those stages and steps in public discussion about the project as well. Okay, so, I hope that was clear. It's kind of the layout of the project. Mr. Nadler, anything that I missed? Mr. Supervisor is uh, at the risk of uh, 
Making your head grow. I was just thinking to myself, what a good summary of that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And I think that was very well said. Um, yeah. 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 <laughs> well, it was a <laughs> No, we're cutting. Uh, Sure, my, I hear a however. My fourth grade <laughs> read, my, my fourth grade reading teacher would be proud. Yeah. She, she you would be proud. <laughs> oh, well, board is doing this for the first time in quite some time as his staff, as is quite frankly myself. Uh, I think we're following the procedure so far. Um, and I think now is the time to hear from the applicant and get feedback that provide feedback in a public setting. Um, and obviously you'll be setting a public hearing. Yep. If you if you accept the application. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I think it's uh, you're all set. Okay. Um, go ahead. Just a quick question. Mm -hmm. What sort of press will there be? If, you know, will this be publicized in the local? So papers? once this once this goes forward, I I assume, and I'll let the I'll kind of let the project, I'll let the presentation play out, but there will be more coming forward. Uh, there will be um, town publications, uh, publications to the north, you know, to the, the public hearing will be advertised, the public right. hearing will be put out there. But as far as uh, Facebook, social media, and things like that, too, because we know that unfortunately that's where most people get their news and updates more than the newspapers anymore. Uh, so that will be out there to keep make people aware of the next uh, public hearings and the next steps along the way for that presentation. Doug is also today set up. A, a yes, website. thank you. Yes. So there is on the town website also information. So there are links to every step. So the presentation will be on there. Any documents, any discussion, any letters from residents um, that will be gathered, summarized. So it'll be a one stop shop to look for that key information. Okay. Interestingly enough, Mr. Supervisor, the resolution, the proposed resolution, also indicates that it will be distributed. Uh, the town clerk shall provide a copy to the Watershed Council and the Watershed Association. Yes. So you'll be seeing it. It'll be coming here. Keep your eyes out. All right, so with that, I will turn the time over to our presentation from German Brothers. This is new to you guys. This is really new yeah. to me. So, um, <laughs> well, we'll learn together. Yes. You can move the mic up from the. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, yeah. Thank you. So, my name is Peter Brew, um, uh, co owner of German Brothers Marina. It's B-R-U-U, -U, by the way. There's a little typo in there. Um, um, I wanted to start off by acknowledging Rick and Peter German. I do know that they are uh, present virtually. Um, Rick and Peter, longtime members of the community, longtime business owners. Um, they owned the marina before I did for 44 years. And in my travels now in the marine industry, they uh, are really well regarded for doing things the right way. Um, and I think that in the community as well, they did things the right way. And it's been two and a half years now for me to try to uh, keep up that excellent reputation that they have. So that's uh, been a little challenging for me. So this is my third summer owning the marina. And I can tell you when I purchased the marina, uh, all this was was not in the cards. I don't want you to think that this was uh, kind of uh, something that I had previously uh, dreamt up before the purchase came along. I did intentionally spend some time at the marina um, looking at how it operated, the benefits that it provides currently, what it could provide to the community. And this, this plan started to come together. And, uh, and then incentive zoning came along and started to make it a little bit more of a reality, a possibility anyway. Um, so um, tonight I'm gonna show you in this presentation um, how hopefully together the town and the marina can uh, together, we can develop a mutually beneficial product uh, outcome. Then uh, I'll discuss the amenities that the town provides. I'll discuss some of the things that the uh, marina will plan to do with, with the incentive zoning and then benefits to the general community from the overall plan. So 
or you next slide, please. So just a, a quick orientation. Obviously, it's the lake. This is north, that is south. This is an overlay onto the existing property. Um, the marina does now own their the house that's underneath here. Um, and then this is uh, another pre existing home that the marina recently purchased. It's a two rapid lake. So at, at the south end, that's a single family residence that the marina just purchased. Um, I think anyone who's driven down County Route 16 can uh, testify that it can be challenging at times. And it's, um, it's our goal, uh, the marina and the town, to try to make that a little bit easier, a little bit safer for everybody as they uh, head down County Route 16. Um, <clears throat> We're hoping to get um, safe ingress and egress. We have um, a single point of entry for parking. Um, and um, one of my favorite parts of this whole uh, uh, evolution is the lake side. There'll be a, an active shoulder. So today that is often blocked by cars and boats and trailers and trucks. Um, we're hoping that it can be painted off into like a if you go and you see a bike lane or an active shoulder lane so that people can in, enjoy that stretch. And I think that would be um, kind of one of a kind on County, on County Road 16. There is no dedicated uh, activity lane there. So that would be beautiful. Next slide, please. So the second uh, benefit that the town would receive is there'd be public access to the lake for individuals and then also for big individuals who would like to launch small non-motorized watercraft. There are two options for where that might be. They're both at the north end. <clears throat> and uh, the intention here is, again, not for a, uh, when we say access, it's not a boat ramp. It's the, the community can interact with the lake. They can sit on the shore. They can have a cup of coffee, watch the sunrise, have an ice cream cone. Um, they can launch a kayak or a canoe or a stand up paddleboard. And that will also um, be part of the Canandaigua water trail. Is everybody familiar with the water trail? That was new to me. I thought that's awesome. So I'm really excited to be kind of a part of that. That was neat. Um, never heard of that even before this came along. <clears throat> um, and then there, uh, today, as you may know, we have lots of boats up here. The boats go into slips that would be in the water here. That design for the slips is to be determined, but some of those slips would be set aside for the public's access. Um, so they'd be able to um, pull up and uh, <clears throat> access whatever services they'd like to at the marina. Uh, next slide, please. Parking. When I first went to the marina three years ago, that was the very first thing that I that I took notes, and I that was that's it, parking. And so I, I knew parking would be uh, an issue, and I, I think we've significantly addressed parking with this proposal. <clears throat> um, you can see that we have. Um, so this would be the, the public access on the north here to the lake. This would be dedicated public parking, and there would be ADA parking in here as well. Um, th that's 10 spots in here. There's 100 parking spaces here in the yellow, which I, I don't know how many there are today because it's on the street, but that's a, that's a massive improvement in the uh, quantity of parking. So we're excited about that. Um, and there are five accessible, ADA accessible parking spots throughout the facility. Next slide, please. So it's continuing on with the amenities for the town, um, there would be public restrooms that are available 24 seven. Um, <clears throat> There are some restrooms today, then it's, it's very interesting to see how many people use those restrooms that aren't members of, uh, that aren't customers. There are people that are riding the lake on their bike, they stop. 
the FedEx drivers. Um, it's I think it's a, a known little uh, spot for people to stop. <clears throat> um, there'll be accessible parking spaces. There'll be accessible crosswalks <clears throat> um, uh, across County Route 16 so that people can easily access. And then all the facilities down here will be uh, ADA accessible as well. Um, <clears throat> there'll be opportunities um, in this area here, there'll be opportunities for picnicking, picnic tables, um, and then also down in, in one of these uh, proposed public access space, there'll be opportunity for picnic tables and uh, just general relaxation. There, uh, it's kind of hard to see, but there are some trails on the plan. Um, <clears throat> there is um, there is in this development up here, there is a, a tr kind of a trail connector that that would connect to. So that would be nice for the community to be able to um, walk through and access some of the other trails that are in the community that are pre existing. Um, I'm, I'm trying to do this in the most collaborative way possible. I reached out to the DEC to see, I'm sorry, not DEC, Fisheries Department to see if there were some things that I could do with fisheries. Um, cause I, I was thinking, you know, the marina for six months out of the year is largely, um, dormant. You know, is there something that fisheries could benefit by using the marina during the winter time? Fortunately, they, they needed something year round. Um, I'm also reaching out to Cheshire fire department to see if they can benefit from, uh, some of the slips that we're adding. So hopefully I know they're, uh, in the process of acquiring a fireboat. I don't know if they've acquired it, but um, I'd love to be able to work with them. Next slide, please. So what, in, in this give take, what is German Brothers asking for in, in exchange for some of those things? Um, we'd like to have um, the eight lodging units, one, two, three, four, five, six, I'll say seven. This last one here is more of a, um, a gathering lodge, if you will. Um, there wouldn't be necessarily a com overnight accommodations in there, but that would be more of a, a gathering space. The, we're asking for this to be divided up into three separate lots. And that is um, the reason we're asking for that is because the um, universal dock and mooring law um, if we, if we do this in three 250 feet uh, lake frontage slots, um, we, uh, it affects the number of docks that we can get. So we're asking for um, that to be divided up into three separate lots. That's one of our requests. Um, <clears throat> the approved uses today, the marina is, uh, has the pre-existing non-conforming exemption that limits the uses for the property. So we're asking for that to be expanded to commercial uses such as uh, community recreation, marina, retail, food and beverage, and uh, lodging rental. And um, UDML, I don't know if everybody here is familiar with that, but we're asking for the town to designate us as a, uh, a tier two facility. Um, to that would uh, determine the number of docks that we could possibly uh, install. Doug, I made a quick note um, when I heard your presentation. Um, my marina and probably most of the others, we have very little, it's not a public ramp. So there's very little in and out. Most of the boats at my marina go in and stay in. So there's um, not a tremendous risk anyway. There are some that take it out and they go to Lake George for the week, but that's pretty rare overall. Most of the boats go in and stay in. So just at my place anyway. But we do have all the, the signage up that talks about um, cleaning the boats if it does uh, go outside the lake. Next slide, please. Um, so benefits to the community. Again, I went through some of the things the town gets, some of the things the marina gets, some of the things that the town, uh, I'm sorry, the general community will get. Um, I personally think it'll be a lot more attractive than what's there today. If you drive down Westlake Road, I love boats. 
obviously, but you know what, what's here is gonna be a lot more attractive than seeing lots of boats on trailers. Um, I also think they'll have obviously elegant lodging. It'll be family oriented. Um, there will be um, food and beverage in this current location here. That's our, currently our service building um, that will be moved off site to where the YMCA, across the street from the YMCA now. Um, so that a little benefit from that is that takes some of the oily bits that we do, that we use, takes that away from the lakefront. Um, so I do think that would be beneficial to the lake. Um, and I was lost my train of thought there. Um, oh, so I was mentioning from the visual benefits, it's just gonna be more attractive overall. And I do think there are environmental benefits to, to um, moving some of those facilities off, off site and improved parking safety uh, down the general County Route 16 corridor. Sustainability, it's um, been a, a, a primary thought as we go through the various designs. Um, <clears throat> It's kind of hard to see what it looks like today for impervious surfaces, but it looks like a lot of impervious, but there is a lot of impervious today. So what, what is here is pretty much pre-existing as far as impervious. Um, today, there's a big road that goes up here and that's replaced, but this kind of gets added. Um, <clears throat> all of the lodging units are um, on some of the existing green space that's there. We're hoping to try to use some innovative uh, materials so that we can improve the permeability. Um, there will be stormwater management with underground tanks. I'm quickly learning how that all works. That was, I think that's very interesting. So um, that is something that's obviously will be considered and designed into the project. One more slide, one more. <clears throat> so just in kind of a conclusion, I, I've had some time to share a lot of this with community members, voters, non-voters, and maybe I'm talking to a biased audience, but the reception has been phenomenal. Everybody has been saying to me, finally, I can't wait, this is, we need this. So it's, uh, it's been uh, rewarding to hear that, I guess. Um, it's been exclusively enthusiastic. So hopefully the board agrees um, that this is something that is beneficial, again, to everybody that's involved, all the stakeholders, the general residents, the, the town, the lake itself. I do think the lake, uh, the, the water quality will benefit too from taking some of this load off uh, the nearby uh, water lakefront. And again, hopefully the town uh, agrees that this is a good thing. And we'll go through this process together. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Any, thank you. any questions or comments? Yeah. Thank you very well, we have a lot of them. <laughs> we did bring sleeping bags. <laughs> There'll be plenty of time because this process will take time. Um, a lot of very positive elements. Certainly, the look is much different than what we see, you know, today down there, which is, you know, uh, can be kind of hectic. Um, one thing, I, one comment I wanted to make is you alluded to it was that uh, a lot of the storage service uh, trailers are going to be over on County Road 30. I for one would like to see a more complete plan presented that shows what that's going to be, you know, and you know, also talks about I know you well, we talked with Greg the other day about uh it transporting boats back and forth because there's going to be uh, the ability for people to keep a boat at your facility over on County Road 30, call up, ask for the boat to be put in water the next day or next week or something and transport back and forth. How, how all that's gonna work and how that might impact any traffic mm -hmm. or anything in, you know, going through the, <clears throat> going through the city. 
and you know, just kind of a, a, a broader picture. I mean, this is the glamorous part right here. The other part not too glamorous, I doubt, you know, so, but that would be interesting to see, I think. And, um, can I can I answer some sure. of that for you real quick? Well, I don't know if you... So just, um, actually there are two little bits in there that I didn't bring up that um, are significant is on the North Road property, um, it's my intention to have a, uh, a test tank, if you will, um, so that right now all the boats that we store in the winter, they all go into the lake for water testing. <clears throat> the North Road facility will have a filtered tank for all the boats that get tested before they get in the water. So <clears throat> the the amount of boats and their hundreds of boats that we store that go down this road and down that ramp will all of that load moves to North Road. So that all that doesn't all that activity doesn't even come in this direction. So that's yeah. in itself. So they'll go from storage into that uh, service facility in North Road and then to the customer. Um, but there will be transport back and forth. So the second the people that want to that aren't leasing or renting a slip or more. In right. So that's a, what we call a dry storage customer. And it's my estimation that um, that's going to be significantly reduced number of people. Almost everybody wants a slip and they just can't get a slip today because they're not available. All the marinas have waiting lists for slips. So today we have up here almost 70 boats and well, I, they've all asked about this plan and they all say, I can't wait to get into a slip. So the people that are what we could call dry store customers that are would be stored off site, um, in my estimation is gonna be very small. So <clears throat> hypothetically, it's 30 people. And, and I've been tracking the number of boats that go in and out of the marina of late. About a third of those on any given day are in the water. So it would be in the neighborhood of 10 boats that would be transported. And I don't think they'd be coming all the way from North Road. I'd be trying to find a, a location that's significantly closer than North Road. So it would be um, a small number of boats that would be moving and hopefully in a shorter distance. Okay, well, that's, that's good to know. Okay. Greg did point out about your test tank and all that one. I, at least when I was talking with him last week. But I think that needs to be part of your presentation. Is my point. Okay. The whole, the whole thing, not just the glamorous part. Okay. Here. Yep. Um, if you could do that, that in the timeline we talked about that. Or, you know, this isn't all going to happen next summer. I no, sir. It's going to take years to, to give people some feeling of what um, construction sequence would be, or what are there going to be tie-ups and traffic, whatever. You know, some kind of presentation of that timeline. Um, Terry, we're also going to be producing a, you know, a, a chart, a Gantt chart, whatever you want to call it, for this five-year schedule. Yeah. Right? Okay. It's, it's sequencing is very important to your point. Right? Yeah. We recognize that already. Yeah. So we'll have that to you in the next 30 days. I believe we will have that for you for a public hearing. Now, a couple other things. I'm curious also. You did allude to a trail going up the, the upper part of the property, the RSM property. Maybe developed, maybe that, who knows? I mean, right. the books for it's not under our control decades, I think. So, two, only two. But have you been in any discussion with them about drainage and what's coming down off the hill? You know, how that going to impact your operation, how all of that fits together? Um, Something I think needs to be addressed. I only got one more thing, and I'll shut up. <laughs> and that is the, the, the incentive and the amenities. Um, you're providing a list of amenities that the town should accept. I was involved in the village project, which had its people that endorsed it and people that weren't terribly in favor of it. But, the town the village negotiated that. Village. The village. The village. Uh, it's the some townhomes. It's next okay. to uh, the bypass, uh, no Cheshire Road. But 
we negotiated with the developer and said, these are some things that we need as a town. And we didn't get everything we wanted. They didn't get everything they wanted. But we, we did it that way. We didn't, we weren't handed a list of, here's what the amenities will be. Can't be that. My, I'm only one person on the board, but you read through our incentive zoning uh, the code. We will propose what amenities the town needs. Maybe those, maybe other things. I, you know, just want to point that out. But that is where I came from when we did it the first time. It was quite a while ago. So I'll say that. Um, I have been this whole time operating under the assumption that those are the amenities that the town wanted. I, it was not my intention to Do you have something state that, from that the you town wanted. So this is what we want. That's fair. Um, um, I, that is fair. Yes. Um, and so I did say it was an assumption. Um, so it wasn't my intention to state these are what you want and these are what you need. Um, so my apologies. Lake access is always welcome. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I have a couple things yeah. that I can bring up. Um, first, thank you for investing in the town and trying to make this an even better location. Um, as I told you in the beginning, my number one is protecting the lake, you know, and I, I hope that you're going to be able to improve the drainage in this location, particularly with the potential future building that's coming up in the future. And I, I know that's important to you to protect the property sure. as well. Um, to that end, I also have a couple of other little questions. and. Um, you also did not bring up your potential restaurant as a possibility, too, because we talked about adding a restaurant of pizza on the Yellow Lake Shore as well. So, so. Uh, I did briefly talk about it here. Um, I guess I didn't go into great detail, not for any reason. Um, so the service building is there today, and that when that goes away, yes, that would be a restaurant. Okay. So I just want to make sure that you got that out there because I know that's something people are interested in as well. Very right? interesting. <laughs> yeah. So um, I had a couple questions and you don't have to answer tonight, but I'd like it for our public hearing. I'd really like to know exactly how many boat slips you're proposing adding in those three different um, those three different lots. May um, I add to that, please? On can, the I, same. can I just finish that? Yep, go so exactly how many boat slips and how many you currently have boat slips and warrants. So that we just so we can get a feel for the visual impact mm -hmm. as well as the lake impact from that as well. If you can also determine um, for comparison purposes what other marinas on the lake have for boat slips. I know for me, it, I mean, it would be helpful to know how many boat slips are at um, Cup. Whatever it's called, whatever point. And I think what it works. Um, but just to know and get a visual for an understanding of the impact that that would be having. It also might be helpful if you had any kind of a of a reference for how far into the lake your more and so as well. So I think you have a little bit of this attachment, but that would be helpful for the public to see how far the more and so right now and how far the dots would go in the future. Um, so on that particular thing, we're actually going to be. I think you are so, in, from the current footprint. That I just I think that would be helpful for yep. everybody to have a visual on that as well. And the number to address the number of docks, the UDML um, Next. tells me yeah. what you can do. Um, it would be my intention to, um, based on market demand, yep. um, see how many people want to buy. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, so, so I think she'd like to see the maximum number allowed. So UDML is pretty clear as to what that, is allowed. You could just yeah. print that yeah. out yeah. on the map. Sure. So I just would like that to be board members don't have clear. To count. Yeah. Um, and then um, finally, um, my largest concern in when, when I read the um, the attack that we had here with our town board memo or town board MIP agenda is the description of uh, public public boat slips, public parking, trail connector, and the public lake access with the launching point. They're all listed as a 30-year license, um, which to me is not really an amenity um, that's provided in town. I know there's some um, concerns on your lake frontage and how long that has to be in order for the ADML to work. Um, but 
I have a lot of concerns about things that last for 30 years. I hope to be here in 30 years, um, and I would not want to uh, have a 30 year agreement. I would be more interested in either a permanent easement or uh, some sort of permanent um, ownership of at least the part that connects to the lake um, to get out of that dock and um, the upper parking area as well. Um, just because, um, you know, we've had things like like Bristol Harbor in the, in the past, or even uh, Madeira, that felt like there were public lake access opportunities. And they weren't, they're were private organizations. And we want you to be able to do whatever makes you a profit in that land. But at the same time, I don't want to create a temporary public amenity. So that's you want to I said I was done, but I just want to throw in one comment. Yeah, it is that <coughs> granting the incentive if we approve this incentive going change, it's good forever, not 30 years. It runs forever. So whatever the amenities, in my opinion, the amenities run forever. If your concern is financing related, I'm happy to work with your attorneys to structure the permanence while also allowing you to get financing. The greater question is, the UDML is all driven by frontage. And if I don't own the frontage, I can't get the docks. So if I, if I turn over ownership of frontage, it, the whole thing falls apart. Well, maybe you don't have to turn over ownership. <coughs> maybe there's another way. Mm -hmm. We have a turn. <laughs> Ready for me? Well, let me I just think say, you need 30 I seconds. think we could work something out that is, uh, I don't think you're getting, I don't think the town board or at least two members are interested in a 30 year lease, but I think we could work something out that didn't impact your UDML entitlements yep. um, while still giving the town the permanence it's, it wants and probably is entitled to since the amenities are permanent in nature as well. Well, we can work something out. Fortunately, differently, we need something in place to protect our interests in case 30 years from now, everything changes, ownership changes, people move on, whatever the case may be. Um, we need something in place to protect our long-term interest in the public spaces. But I, before I go ahead, no, no I'll, I've already talked a lot tonight. Yeah. So I'll just, it's <laughs> um, I'm not expecting you to address these comments tonight, but I do think that you ought to take them into consideration for your future plan. Um, I did hear you say that there could be boats going from our lake to other lakes and then back into our lake. That raises a concern to me. Um, I don't know if it takes one boat to have these tabs on them, or whether it takes 10 boats to have these tabs on them. But I think that's a concern. Uh, and I think that if you can do something to address that, uh, that would be helpful. To Terry's point, I don't know if you got it um, relative to the traffic on West Lake. Currently, besides your storage, moving your boats in and out of storage offsite, all of your dry storage, the ones that are going to be moving from the, the hill into the water is just across the street. Now what I'm hearing you say is you're gonna have dry storage offsite and you'll be transporting those boats down West Lake Road and back and forth. Uh, and it could be frequent, it could be every weekend, it could be multiple times. I'd like to know how many dry dock storage uh, slips you're going to have and how many of those boats could be traveling up and down west of the road. Uh, to reiterate what I think some of the other my colleagues on the board have said, uh, if you are going to be dedicating public space for the public use, I'd like to see some type of long-term commitment um, that will extend beyond 30 years and extend to the community. Um, I do like your plan. I do think it enhances the safety of Wesley Road. 
uh, I think it beautifies uh, Western growth by not having the boats up on the hill. Uh, and that certainly makes the lakefront more cool. Um, one thing I think we need to have and come to us with, and I think Adeline uh, referred to it, what I, I call it a phasing and logistics plan. And I'd like to see all of your uh, slips that you anticipate to construct. I'd like to see you have all of your moorings that you intend to have in the water. I'd like to see traffic patterns for the boats that are going to continue to use your facilities for gasoline or in water maintenance or any of those types of conditions. Right now, you know, there is an established boat pattern that has been used for uh, in excess of four decades. As you mentioned earlier in your presentation, and I think that has become the norm. And you're changing the norm now. And I think we need to be very clear in terms of how that is going to, the boats are going to move in and out of your facility. Um, and I, I think in conjunction with that, as Terry mentioned earlier, there needs to be a phase. We need to understand what the first phase is going to be. If that is successful and uh, works to your benefit, I'd like to see what the second phase is going to be and then the third phase, however many phases you're going to have throughout this five year period. Um, if you're going to have a restaurant, I'd like to know whether it will be serving adult beverage and to what extent that adult beverage is going to be. It's going to be a full bar or we're just going to be a wine and beer bar. And I think the community probably wants to hear that also. And they come forward with some comments about that. Uh, this one is just for your consideration. I know that uh, some of the other marinas on the lake might do this. So you might want to consider it, but they do have accessible boating. Uh, something you might want to consider offered to the public. Uh, I think I saw four to eight public slips on your presentation. Uh, if you're going to make this a destination for the community and you're going to want people coming in and out to uh, go to your ice cream stand or your restaurants, I'm not sure four to eight boat slips is adequate for the community to come to your, your uh, place. That number doesn't make there are additional slips that are transient for the restaurant. And that would be helpful to see that when you're phasing the logistics plan so that the community and us fully understand that. Um, Why did you separate the public and the transient? That's what I thought you wanted. <laughs> I think we have, I think, I think, you know, public or transient, in, in my mind, and I'm sure it probably is in many of our other board members' minds, it's all the same thing, right? I agree. Coming to visit your restaurant, to me, Transient public are the same. Same. Um, I mentioned warnings. Uh, another comment I'm going to make, just because uh, it could be environmentally friendly. If you're on the water, there's going to be a lot of pavement. Uh, maybe you can use a permeable paver of some type or permeable pavement of some type. And the last comment I have, and I hope I haven't taken too much time and bored everybody to death. I'm not sure that project as depicted on that picture represents your lot lines or not. And I would like to see that on the drawing. So in other words, is the green space I see to the west of that parking lot, all the green space you have for the lot lines or not? That might make it so oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that is lot line, what I'm looking at right there. Okay. That's kind of my comments. Uh, and then again, you want the three parcels. I'd like to see what the parcels are that you want to uh, divide it into. And I hope I haven't overwhelmed you with this. Some of the ideas and thoughts that I've had. I'd just like to say thank you for investing in the town. I think this is a, a, a wonderful looking plan. Obviously, some of the details have to be worked out. And I think the, I don't speak for the board, but I speak for myself. I think we can work those out. I, I 
I'm encouraged by it. People that I've talked to since it was put on our agenda have come to me and said they're encouraged about it. Um, I think access to the lake and a place to eat at the lake are two huge things that people ask for all summer long. So thank you for thinking of this. And from my standpoint, we'll, we'll, we'll work through these details. If you could, Peter and Greg, if a lot of these comments are, to me, it's not a complete plan. If you could show, like what John was just talking about, what Anne was talking about, some more drawings and depict what this thing is going to look like with the slips that you've already envisioned. And people react to visual stuff. And you know, I don't doubt you what you're saying. But it helps a lot for me. I know if I can see it. Mm -hmm. you know, and if you flesh the plan out more here and over in County Road 30, it's something you probably get, you know, pick what it's going to look like when we get to that last phase and complete it. I think that'd be very helpful for us as well as the public. You could see really what's going to happen. The more you can put into that kind of presentation, very helpful to people, very helpful to you. I have actually one more comment. Go ahead, and then I'll wrap up. I've got this much earlier, and we'll talk about this in the public hearing, but you know, I've seen the potential for using that really not as a rental, but potentially a uh, I guess meeting place or whatever you, you can find it as. And you're asking for a commercial designation for your facility as well. We do need to discuss what level of events you're anticipating sure. at. Uh, right now, we don't allow events in short term rentals. These are kind of a short term rental, I think, at this point. Um, that would not be, um, and you're asking to be a commercial operation as opposed to a private operation. So we need to address that in the public. In my mind, at the moment, and um, it's it's more or less affiliated with the lodging units. So there are going to be kids in here. The kids maybe it's a play area for kids. Maybe if they're business meetings. I had one of my customers today said he has lots of people come in from out of town. He said that would be awesome if I could put them up here and meet there. So. Um, you just, I just want there to be a definition of that because people are going to come to the public sure. hearing and say, are you going to have a wedding here that's ways, going yes. on till one o'clock in the morning with fireworks, you know, so that's <laughs> just to have an answer yeah. to that, you know, and, and we need, we're going to need to specify, you know, what's acceptable with that kind of facility in, in a commercial environment as opposed to a residential environment. So. All right, I will turn the time over to Mr. Nadler for a comment and then I will comment. So, I think you're in really good shape here because all of this stuff that what essentially what Adeline is asking is what you need to provide. You need to identify the uses, not just for the one that we just spoke about, but everything. Um, essentially identify what you're asking for in more detail. Um, you know, this is a zoning matter. So the town board, before they can make a decision, needs to see what you're proposing which one of those buildings essentially is going to be which um, and how many and how and the size. I don't think at this stage of the review, uh, unless Terry adamantly uh, objects based on what you said, Terry, I think you need uh, detailed architectural alterations or really to invest any more engineering or uh, site plan expense. I think you could pencil it in. But the town board needs a lot more information. I don't think it's engineering information. I think it's the town board needs to have an operations plan, what exactly they're planning on doing, and uh, how that will be done in each of these uh, areas that you're asking for some plan. Um, I heard they say plan, um, you know, before we can agree, uh, or before the town board can resolve. Um, there's got to be, you know, those amenities are going to have to be promised in writing and uh, on or before a certain date. Um, and, you know, we so might as well get that estimated timeline down uh, now so the town board can make a better decision. Um, that might be a uh, preliminary uh, submittal requirements. We need to know that. Uh, 
down from the amenity costs. Um, total on the lights of China um, that needs to be assigned per line item in the total. Break down per. I think that's an area in our. I think that's an area in the zoning application already. Okay. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Need plot lines laid out. No, not for this. Not, not for the I mean, yes, you need to know. We will. We right. so absolutely right. will. But either way, regardless of what's there or not, they, uh, I think you just say approximately. Yeah. 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 The incentive value breakdown and the amenity value breakdown. Uh, because in the end, the incentives only gets, it's really a cost benefit analysis. Sure. So we need more numbers. Uh, you know, I saw very clearly excluded the uh, site access safety stuff and uh, things that weren't actually amenities that you've got to be provided. Um, I think it's a, a good subject on the release. I think there's no one needs to see more detail on that, about that. Not before they set up public hearing, but by public hearing. So just when you say the incentive breakdown, what do you mean by that? The value uh, of? So they, the applicant is proposing amenities, public access, parking, public Dock spots, those each should have a value. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, yeah uh, those are amenities. You said incentive. Yes. Uh, and so, the of the building, yeah. the amenities. So the town code says that uh, it should describe the requested incentive and its value and the value of the proposed amenity. So that's right if it's the proposed amenity. You're, so you're saying the value of that. Yeah, the value yeah. of the incentive. Yeah, the incentive there's, there's is more than that. Mm -hmm. um, which is why I was going to recommend, and I don't know that this is required by our town code, but it's useful. Uh, describe what's allowed right now. But if you're allowed to build one structure, you know, put a value on that. Put a value on the eight structures, and there you have it. It's a cost benefit analysis that the town board is going to have to make. Yeah. And at this stage, they have to make an initial determination that, you know, the values. When we did the villas, it was fairly easy because yeah. each dwelling place had a north quarter of this one, north quarter of my box, there's five, so there's four. So each one was a million bucks. Yeah. You're going to build 30 of those, so $30 million, roughly plus infrastructure and all that. Give you the forty nine dollars. Okay, there's the value of the incentive. This is a little tougher to do, I would think. Yeah, I think it's well. Then that's why I'm suggesting, and I think the town board will eventually have to insist that it really be broken out because it is tough. Um, and the other side of that equation with the bill is most of the uh, incentives were infrastructure related, right? Which you could put yeah. a little here. A linear cost per foot up. You can put a thing there after this. Yes. You can put a cost. Yes. Oh, they just, oh, then the others. Oh, Either this way. is increased density as well. Isn't it? Yeah. So put a value on that. There's formulas people in the real estate industry, I'm sure, can pop. You know, the finance side can pop those calculations together for the town board and pick them both in there. So there's no rep. Did you have just have a quick question? Um, it's to the town board or um, the, they, they are proposing the UGML tier two. Could somebody explain? Yeah, I'm, I'm headed to that. What it means? Yeah, yeah, and how many yeah. folks or slips? Yep. Yep, you read. So yep, you read my mind. So I know that's scary, isn't it? <laughs> you know, it's not. It's a place we want to visit, but trust me, you don't want to live here. Um, so, a couple questions, and I, I want. I'll hit on what Oksana mentioned first. The reason why, and correct me, my understanding is the reason why we want. You're asking for 250 foot lots. Three of them is that maximizes the boats in the water. By UDML, that allows 50 slips and 15 moorings per 250 feet. 
So the maximum potential request with a phase two would be 150 volt slips, tier two, tier two. yeah, tier two, 150 volt slips and 45 more. And that's New York state law. That's New York state law. That's the maximum. We cannot exceed that. Not New York state, it's UDML. Well, that's UDML, that's law, that's, yeah, that's, Universal. we have to follow that. So 150, 150, 45, the maximum that can be requested between both slips, between the docks and the moorings is 195. So that would be the maximum. That would be asking for everything out there. So that's why that's why that's the 250 feet. Now, part of the negotiation is, well, we're not comfortable. You know, I'm just hypothetically speaking right now is we might not be comfortable with this number. We would be comfortable with this number. And that's part of the negotiation. We can grant, we, we can't go under the, we can't go over, but we can make an agreement to stay under what the UDML says, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, so what I need to know coming through, because I've sat through, I feel like I know this project pretty darn well, because I've <laughs> sat through 10 of these, I've sat through 10 presentations because with each town board member, presenting plus my own individual one. I sat through them. So details kind of change at times and I know that's a natural progression, but I really am reiterating what was said. I need, I need to see the details and the hard numbers. I think we're at that point where we kind of talked or, you know, during the presentations, it was kind of a feeling out process, seeing where people were. Now we need to see hard numbers and we need to see, okay, this is, this is the map. This is the minimum number for you guys. The minimum number number of uh, slips and moorings that we would want. For example, I'm just speaking out loud, so we know. Okay, this is what this is what that number is. Um, I also, again, need to know, and it's not going to change your whole plan, but I think we're at the point now where we need to know. Okay, these houses, the, these buildings, the units, they're going to have X number of rooms. That's the plan. So we, this, that would be a, a rezoning. So they're going to be this number. They will have this number of rooms. Um, square footage. Square footage. Uh, the number of square footage and the number of rooms. So we need real details. It doesn't need to be, like Chris said, it doesn't need to be the whole um, elevations and everything else. It just needs to be, this is how big, this is the number of rooms. Uh, and this, this is what we, we would be requesting. Uh, I also, because we are asking for a value incentive in return. And some of that has been presented to us. I would also, going with what our attorney said, I need to know what the projection would be for, okay, this is, we're putting in six of these. This is our investment. This is our potential income. This is the incentive. If we have one, it would be this type of business or this type of benefit to the business profit wise. Now, if we can have five more of them, it would be this type of benefit because you're gaining that, the incentive zoning, you're gaining the extra business growth. So there's a better, there's a greater bottom line there. There's a greater uh, growth and in income potential. So by us allowing that you grow. So I need to kind of see that number. Does that make sense? Yeah. Am I allowed? And we're we're okay asking for that. Correct? Absolutely, you're actually okay. required. It's required by the uh, incentive zoning okay. section that those numbers. So I need, and I need to see the, the hard numbers. And, and again, and I and I don't want to repeat too much. The number total number of boats in the water now versus potential boats uh, that would be coming in and would be in there. And also, lastly, you had mentioned. The access, you know, we all, I think we all agree from what I'm hearing, so we need a longer term permanent access amenity given to the term, given to the town of Canandaigua. You mentioned the bathrooms and other things in your presentation. You said it would be 24 seven access. I would hope that that is, that the public would have access, you know, if not 24 seven, as long as you're open during hours of operation, the public would have access. During of our hours of operation, the public would have access to any of the public, um, the publicly provided amenities, uh, because it would be a not a restricted, not a restricted time frame, not a restricted time period. Like some, you know, certain hours, it's not. It would, it would be used for other things. It's going to be all 
for what it had since during the was about Chris from Iowa. So you want uh, that open at night? Hours of point. operation. Um, I mean, what I'm getting at is, yeah, the sign would be, you know, close to dark. But what I what, what I would want to see is be repurposed, right? Like repurposed between six and nine p.m. for events as Correct. part of the restaurant or the marina, mm -hmm. that type of thing. You know what I mean? So, yes. so people would have full access. Anybody from the mm -hmm. public, whether it's hours of operation or whatever. Um, so yeah, so I think we're to the point where now it's time, and I'm comfortable. I think we we're in a good time for the public hearing. Tighten the presentation with more details coming back because I know that's what the public's going to want to know. They're going to want to know how much. What's the net increase in boats on the water? How many are there now? How many are there going to be? What's it going to do to my view? What's the impact going to be? What's the impact going to be on the watershed? How many people are going to be there and attending? How many? You know. What's the specific use? So now it's time to get into the specific specific details and put it all out there. Put it all out on the table and then negotiate through that. I have a question for you guys on timing, just kind of phasing. Uh, the first domino for me would be putting the docks in because I'm going to need to have a place to put the boats. And the docks can only go in in the winter or actually I should say late spring. Um, so my timing could vary drastically. Like if you said yes today, I could put them in over the winter and they'd be in the spring. But if you told me yes, um, January 1st, they're probably not gonna go in for another 18 months or 14-ish months. So <clears throat> it's gonna be hard for me to give you tight dates on the phasing with that variable at the beginning. Does that make sense? Then say that, then they don't need tight dates. They need- We need phase one with time frame. So time frame, phase one. So phase, yeah. phase one okay. is the, uh, the yeah. docks go in. They would have to go in during this time period. So the whole process is based on that initial domino falling. So sure. if we decide, you know, let's say it's not until, and I don't know how long this is, I don't know how long, you know, it, through the process, it could take uh, a month, two months, three months, I don't know, as we work through the process of where we are. Uh, if it is within the window, then it can say, okay, we start. But if it's outside of the window, that phase one understand, understandably would be kicked back until the next sure. possible time to put those in. And then the rest would fall in place. Makes sense. Because we're not trying, you know, in my discussion, we're not trying to hold things up. Because we, I mean, I, I think from hearing from everybody, the project is needed and some sort of improvement in that area. But we also need to make sure that we're all on the same page and we are doing what's best for residents who want to come and enjoy that and guests, but also residents who live here uh, and here, are here all the time. We want to make sure that everybody's protected. I understand this is a new project for incentive zoning and the ROVs. But let us not forget next door what is going to be happening, RSM. So, which is another huge project. And, you know, for the residents that are living near on either side of the marina and RSM, to so those are all things that we can think of in the future. I don't know if we can pair the two together. I mean, we need, we do need to think of the big picture yeah. and the potential impact. And that's kind of part of our deliberation or our discussion. And then that point, that all valid points for the public hearing. Right. Um, and at this point, I the only good. thing to be yeah. done tonight is give a little feedback. Yep. Set up. Here. Yep. So I would say, and definitely encourage people to come and share their thoughts, share those thoughts at the public hearing. Uh, it's important for people to be heard uh, and get those thoughts and get them on record. And that all of it will be heard. So at this point, um, so we can keep moving on, um, I'm going to, if anybody else, we all good? 
Let me go just a response yes. to that. <clears throat> Obviously, it's a seasonal business, and <clears throat> the the work um, almost certainly has to be done during the dormant time. So when the when West Lake Road is not quite as busy, winter time is when we'll probably have more of this type of activity. So when it's busy, I just we can't do the work. So I, I don't think it will be. Um, given that the activity on the on the road is down during the winter, it shouldn't be absolute chaos, maybe just a little bit of chaos. I'm also thinking about the steep slopes and both developments. So we'll, we'll get into that more. I mean, we could, as we know, we could talk for, we could keep talking on this a lot and we will, and we'll have that opportunity. Um, We'll have that when we set the public hearing. Public hearing may not be started and concluded. Correct. It could, the it public open, hearing could be extended. Uh, we will have a limit on the amount of time per evening. We're not, we won't go for four hours, but it can be extended. It closes when we announce that it's closed. So that public hearing period can extend for a period of time. I would also really encourage people to email the town board regarding this and their thoughts, whether or not they can be here for public hearing. Yes. We want to be able to read what people's thoughts and concerns and, and positives are before we get to the right. Okay. Thank you. So thank you very much, Peter. Thanks, Peter. Yes.